Well, hello and welcome to All My Art and Soul. I'm Michelle Holden, the artist behind the channel. And what you're looking at here is the, I think it was part two or three or so, the beginnings of this journey of three paintings. And um, I think in all, there's seven parts. So if this is what you would like to see me demonstrate, um, a, a multi-layering process of collage and abstract paint, um, you have come to the right channel. So uh, stay tuned, hit that like button, and subscribe if this is what you are interested in. So here we go. Um, I do believe I have finished this one um, for sure. Now, I say that because after uh, I finish uh, at different stages, and this is the final stage, and I think I'll retitle my video to the final stage or process or something tag because I'm researching the searchability and, of course, um, um, algorithms. So I'm just, uh, as this was sitting around, as I was saying, I just noticed th things that catch my eye in the peripheral. Um, the gray, I just, this beautiful gray, and um, it's a very light gray, and you can warm it up, change the temperature according to, you know, the re uh, according to your palette. But as I put that in, like, I love the gray. It looks okay right there where I'm putting it in now, but I'm, I do end up changing uh, that gray spot beside those uh, little figures to black. Just because there's so much black on the other side, this just sort of, I don't know, it just didn't relate to any of it. And maybe in the future, if I use more gray in the beginning or under layers or incorporated that, it would have um, related better. So that's okay. So now I'm just playing with the value of this um, of this tone, this gray. And these last little layers, sections that I put in, they're very, very particular. Um, I probably could have used my little color shaper there and it would have made a much cleaner edge, but um, I'm just using that flat brush and welcome and, and just just uh, sorry to jump around but that's just how I'm rolling tonight because it is New Year's Eve the last day of 2022 and of course this is just relatively in our linear time calendar um, but significant just the same so I thought before we move on to 2023 and new um, down new paths, um, learning some, taking some new directions, which I'm going to be taking finally in larger work and finally video recording. I've been experimenting on this in the back, uh, behind the scenes. Um, it's going to be an incredible year. And I think that seems to be the buzz on all the socials. Um, we ran into, my husband and I were at, of course, Costco because of New Year's Eve and all that fun stuff. Um, people are a little more chatty than usual. And um, this one older gentleman was saying, well, you can only go up <laughs> from 2022. And I think he's right. <laughs> so back to creating here. Um and even now, when I'm looking at that gray, rec a vertical rectangular little piece, it just sticks out as an odd, as an oddity. Um, even the gray in those little figures, it, did, it didn't work. So we'll come back to that. So, and I know I left this a little smudgy 
so uh, before because I was experimenting with some black and of course when you get black on a rag or any other tone or paint that's a really good way to pick up texture and yeah that would be would that be visual texture or physical texture well you're enhancing the physical texture that's there so technically it would be a physical texture but you're increasing the contrast of the of the of the hills and valleys of that of that uh, texture so the last couple days as I was going by this painting and I leave them out on one of my longer tables in another station not at my art journaling station because I like to work there and though this week has been because of the holidays and Christmas and everything it's been um it's been very hectic and I am always always glad to get back on track January 1st um Leave a comment below if you, um, what do you plan to do with your art? Do you have uh, resolutions, um, affirmations, um, manifestations of any, any plans? Um, I'm always interested in what people are, are doing and planning. Um, so that's, it's, it's really cool. Um, if you haven't yet, jump over to the Facebook group. I am planning, um, I am not planning, I'm doing a face, this is my first Facebook Live. I'm a little nervous, but that's okay. Um, that's one of my resolutions. Um, think out of the box. Think, stop doing, well, keep doing what I'm doing, but do all those other things. Do, get over the fear. And if you have a little tingle of butterflies in your stomach, that's probably the right choice to make because I've read that it makes you grow. So having those circles in the lower left quadrant of this work is really cool. Um, what do you think? I almost could have, now I don't know where I got this idea, left them faded and then came in with slightly larger, even thicker circles of only three over top. And that would have really made an interesting um, subtle layers and would not have, uh, it would have enhanced this composition here. Um, but I will keep that in mind for next time. I bought a uh, some new paints, um, some new brushes, uh, my last purchase at my art store, uh, so I can write that off. <laughs> anyway, and a new canvas, a brand new fresh canvas. I'm not painting over another canvas for my first painting of 2023 in a large canvas, and I will be filming that. So, as you can see, I'm trying, I'm attempting here to bring down some of that blue and those beautiful blue circles up at the top. It's okay. Um, those circles are a teal while that collage is a little bit more green. And I think that's why, it, mm, mm, mm. no, it stands out too. So it doesn't work. So on with the next idea. Oh, not quite yet. I'm not quite finished working this out. So, I use my nail a lot. If there's an edge to run, uh, to run that line, just so it's really super accurate. And I really needed to see that it didn't work. <laughs> so it needs to be black. Oh, really? Okay, I had to go with one more different value here. I love, this is such a great way to analyze um, my process. I've been watching a few videos and um, I would love to hear from you subscribers and really um, thank you so much as I am over uh, 6,000 subscribers who are 
um, and you follow other channels as well, I know. And it's so, it, it's, a, it's a nice variety. Uh, and, but thank you so much for supporting my channel. My next goal is 10,000 subscribers. I know it'll take a while, but that's the next benchmark that I want to aim for in 2023. And there's another resolution or manifestation or whatever you want to call it. So here comes the black. Oh, finally. And you just know right away, right? It's a feel thing. And I'm really finding and have been reflecting of about how my process works. Is it a feel? Um, of course, because it's an into, I'm, I'm trying to learn and I'm researching intuition, intuitive process. It's, it's such a fascinating subject. Now, the black may be a piece of slightly visually textured collage would have been better with maybe emulating those dots from the Oh, and that's what I do. That worked. Too dark, too solid was still sticking out. And now that blends in. That's, it's, it's amazing how just that subtle change can make such a difference. Yeah, so I'm debating those two white lines. It's like an equal sign, vertical. Um, rather annoying. And I love, and I must say, um, everyone. Um, one of my students, my, um, not an art student, it's my full-time job, um, for Christmas got me a pack of stencils. And I believe they're eight by 10, whatever the size of my jelly plate printer is. And I just was thrown and I cannot, and you know who you are, um, either the mom got them or, and um, I won't mention uh, names, of course, but thank you so much. And I've gone through, I made a, made a little video of using them, so I'll just use it for like sped up on Instagram or little, little things. And I just love these stencils such a variety, small, large, and um, thank you again. So, oh, and of course, right here, didn't wait for the black to dry, but just cleaned up those edges, and I see that I did not clean the edge below. Huh, maybe I did. I hope I noticed that before it dries. Maybe I don't. Oh, well. And I know this, this particular one of the three has been fascinating with me um, because of the scratching in the lower left, which is the very, very first layer that we started out with. If you go back to part one, and I will leave part one in the card right here in this video, in the upper right-hand corner, I do believe the cards show up. And, yeah, didn't like that orange. Too much orange. On this one, it works just a subtle amount. And now here is the um, a very thin layer of, uh, you can call it, a, a, it's called glazing. So, quinacronome nickel gold, nickel azo gold. And it's quite an orangey. There's a hair or something in there that's driving me crazy. So that was more yellow. And now I brought in and I'm changing the temperature of that beige, of course. And now I'm lifting it. And this is just your, your bunch of cotton rags that you buy, the big pack of white. They are amazing. And... I think this really helped and it's really working when I do lift a lot of it off. Though around that circle, I could have lifted some more off and left it to be gradating around the circle. Um, I don't know 
under the lights if I notice that. But just playing around. And in the end, with a really good um, layer of gloss medium to protect your papers, um, you can spritz a little bit of the rubbing alcohol on the on a rag. I use a, ra a cotton rag rather than paper towel because it, it tends to deteriorate. I could really um, remove a little bit of that. Rather than spraying it on directly, which would penetrate the layers and maybe um, soften them up too much. But that's what I want to do down below. Okay, so I finally noticed that. And I just put a little bit in. Okay, so it's definitely a different beige, um, a neutral, than that half arc or bridge shape or whatever you want to say. Sort of, oh, and that's what I'm doing right now. So I squirted that and it really softens it up. But with collage, you have to be careful. <clears throat> and I'm really loving um, the board, the, the wooden panels. Though I, um, my art store, I didn't see any large ones. So I'll just still keep working with the 12 by 12. And that's it for that one. And now this is painting number two. And that was fabric. I really didn't like covering it up. But next time, I know how I'm going to use all these bright colors that I apply in many, many different areas. And I'm going to create grids. I've been learning about grids. See, and right away that adding that black continues that shape. And now the busyness from all those vertical lines below those nice swirly lines there in the black lower right hand quadrant. Um, I don't even know if I want to eliminate them, but darken them. Just push them back a bit more. And then, of course, when you do that, you can experiment by doing it gradually and finding the value. Um, if you want to be super dark or just a little bit dark, um, and do it gradually. I find that's a good way to do it. Until, your, of course, your instincts kick in from a multitude of experiences of using the intuitive process here. So, love this card. And it's really funny because I some I don't know, some nights you can just be so sloppy, my hands are in the paint. It's like, what am I doing? Anyway, so I I didn't I didn't like covering this up, but I'm getting better at that. It's like, well, no, you're a distraction. You're not adding to my painting. And as soon as I put this beautiful, yellowy, um, real textured paper down, it just, that blue, those blue crop circles, the four there, just really popped out. So now I got paint all over this piece, made a mess. So I do end up peeling the whole thing off because I have a bunch of those and I put a fresh piece down. Okay, and then of course it left tons of it behind. Ah, <laughs> so funny. And this one was, um, this one I love. The blue, the orange, and the yellow, and the neutral, and black. How it plays around. But there's different areas that I, I know that I will be dealing with after this. But I've worked on these enough. It's time to move on. And I'll just catch that. Um, as I have them sitting in a certain spot in my studio, even though it's getting a little crowded in here. Um, I will be putting these paintings, uh, after I title them and am happy with them, I will paint the edge black. And I need to find some floater frames for these. So um, where do you get your floater frames? Um, I haven't, I used to frame my work all the time. And then I said, okay, enough is enough. I'm not doing it anymore. 
So I started painting on gallery canvases and doing a wraparound or black or just leaving them white. And they look great, unframed. But to sell these, to have them properly presented, they need a frame. So I don't know if a natural wood frame or a black frame would look good, but, and I also need to get the, um, the artist apps so I can put those up and show them um, in different venues, uh, situations, uh, rooms, by, you know, all of that. So there's a few things that, uh, actually I have a big list that I am doing for this 2023. What are you doing? What's your most major thing for your art, we'll say? Your art process, your art exploring, that if it was at the top of your list, what would that be? Um, very interested. And um, if you're at all interested, don't forget to hop over to the Facebook group because I will be this year um, doing Facebook Lives, doing more tutorials, uh, which will be free at this point. I just don't believe in uh, charging uh, anything at this point for my Facebook group. But um, when I reach that point, it'll, it'll, it'll show itself. Oh, see, it didn't like that, so I just had to had to move that crack a bit. And see, the clean piece is, really makes a difference. And even this card, it's quite thick, but it has a beautiful physical texture on it. It's, it's embossed, and um, it bubbled slightly. So, but then I noticed after it dried fully, it, just, it, it must have re-shrunk back. And it was fine. And yeah, using uh, the catalyst wedge or any kind of softer edge is really good to get rid of those bubbles. And this, is cor this of course, is my heavy gloss medium. So putting a little gloss over that fabric and of course realized, ooh, that didn't totally dry yet. So here I'm getting, again, being a little messy. Now notice the very transparent smear that is over on that edge, uh, over in the, not an edge, the upper right-hand quadrant, over the six circles. I love that. Tell you the truth, I don't even remember doing that. I know it was intentional, but I just don't know when I did it. You see, those, those lines down there are too busy. So right now, and in the final picture, you see I put a piece of burlap and um, underneath, um, horizontally, just in that section. But I'm not sure I, I even like that. So we will. <clears throat> we'll work on that one. See, I'm catching that line of the, I like that diagonal. I have to be careful it's not a flag of some country or something or see if, if anything is too recognizable I'm not going to use it I don't want it in my work I want my work to be as object you know I have my little symbols that I like of course and I like to use it just gets people um questioning thinking and uh no it wasn't working so I had trouble with just this, this little section which might even end up and I think the best to become black or almost black. Maybe I won't go solid. I'll uh, leave it very dark just so it becomes part of this shape. Yeah, I think that'll be cool. So in my next series of videos, we will be taking this further. And sometimes it's good to use. It depends on how sharp your X-Acto knife is, of course, if you really want to go along an edge. Yeah, I'm not sure about those dots either. I'm not sure about any pattern down in there. I think what's happening 
is it needs to be quiet. There's enough happening in this painting already, especially in that upper left-hand quadrant, which I don't know. I think I did the nickel azo gold glazing. I think I should do black glazing to really push that back. Very interesting. Nope. Nope. And of course, just placing things just to see, you know, where will this go? I know it needs to change. And you see, that works. Um, seeing it now, Yes. So what that did, it unified that whole area with a glaze so that it, it just, they all had more relation to it, to each other, I mean. And yeah, that worked. Yes. So there's a little section there. And notice you see because of the glazing in the left, now the eye jumps over here just because of that, it's just a subtle contrast which does not interrupt the composition. Very interesting. And I'm just, and um, if you're interested in learning how to do this, um, I really believe in starting an abstract art journal. So my thing is abstract art journaling. I, I'm not gonna say I coined the phrase, but I use it all the time. And that's what I call my category of journaling um, because you're using the elements of abstra abstract art in your journal where it's safe. You don't have to worry about the end product. Um, though, because I have a channel and that kind of thing, I, uh, uh, but while I'm doing it, I really, I'm not. The only thing I'm doing is making the edge clean and it, it really the colors, and I just love exploring pattern, shapes, lines, color, value. And it's, oh, there we go. So that's how I did it. Isn't that amazing? What a color shaper can do. And I think I just saw that smear there, and I thought, ooh. And I thought, what a difference that would be um, compared to all of the geometric, the, the, the harder lines. See, that doesn't work because it stops the eye from going across. So I just rubbed that off. And I noticed there was, yes, um, previously horizontal, like ladder kind of things. So... I wanted to just emphasize those a little bit, and I really like that little subtle shape it made, which emulates, in a larger size, the rectangular shape next to it in the left-hand quadrant. So then I'm just noticing, okay, so let's change some value just subtly, and it does work. Yeah, still too much there. I wanted to scrape some off. I love that tone. It's called, um, huh. certain words that just don't stick in my brain. Anyway, I'm loving the blue, the balance of the blue pieces in this work. And I guess because they're all different. You've got a skinny one on the edge, right above that letter E, <laughs> which is so cool. <laughs> I love text. And those, which I do grab the teal. Yeah. I just think it's, a, and, and I try to make it a little stronger, and then all of a sudden it doesn't work. It didn't need to be stronger, though that's what I thought it needed until you see it. And see, so now it's way too strong. Now, mind you, hmm. So it's matching those four circles, those crop circles a bit better, but it just needs to be just toned down with that beautiful neutral. 
And I thought I would just rub a little bit more in there and then lift it off with a rag, of course, just to emphasize that blue a bit more. Okay. Love it. Oh. So, what am I loving about this that's different from my other work? I'm loving the orange, blue, black, white, neutral, and there's red in this one. Even though it's very warm, and then I believe, and I will work on that little section of horizontal lines, but that's it for that one. Okay. So, waiting for the next one, here we go. <clears throat> the line. And I did put, I do put, one more layer of, of that neutral on top of it, and I really think it helps. I'm just trying to continue a little bit, put a little bit more blue, because I finished looking at that previous painting, and I really love the blue in it. So then, of course, you get carried away, and that's too strong, but maybe a lighter. A lighter would have worked, but it was too too in your face. I figured, no, the line, just those two squiggly lines that aren't perfect. I love them. Oh, yeah. And just lightening up that value which increases the contrast between the, uh, the yellow shape next to it and the crop circle. And I love all the ways I'm showing circles in this. Um, black on neutral, white on black, vertical, horizontal in a group. Yes, that's so when it needed. Oh yeah, oh yes. Remember I said in the previous, in part five, that the, I'm gonna call her the screaming woman, <laughs> might need to go. <laughs> so, she's going. <laughs> there we go. Finally, finally, bye. No. <laughs> Oh, too funny. Yes. Now, how far should I bring that down? Hmm. All right. So now we've got all these broken squares all over the place. No good. No. Nope. Had to come all the way down. And that little piece has to go too. Yeah, we just need some quiet up here. Oh, finally. Some peace and quiet. Always looking for peace and quiet. And using those edges, I'm deciding, do I want to leave that edge or make this whole thing more unified? One value. Hmm. I think it does look better that way. And I love all the things hidden underneath. Um, the viewer... Of the work, yep. And see, you see how I did it gradually, and one little section at a time, and then you're responding to a change, cause and effect. And look at that. So it found that horizontal line where the black circles are, continuing, moving the eye across and then down. And that's why it works. At least I believe so. And that's just a little magazine. Thing. So I'm lightening that up so it's closer to the, oh, there I am, closer to the neutral color tone, but I did not want that blue to go away. I just love it. That's just a piece of collage with the teal there. Oh yeah, that looks so much better. Now, the weight. Okay. Yes. So as you can see, what I think happened here is, of course, I wanted to cover those orange ladder or oh, vertical lines or whatever you want to call them. And once I do that, 
which lessens the va- the contrast, then this neutral area becomes as strong, if not stronger, than the black lower left-hand quadrant. It's all in a balance of weight, um, you know, So now that there's a little bit more, and I really could have gone over further, now that I'm seeing this, I will make that change. Where those, that was that stencil girl stencil, which is really cool. Now, just have this little piece of orange lying around, but no, it's a distraction rather than, I thought, okay, I'll narrow it down to make it like a line, but no. So it's very busy enough over there. And again, you see this stencil girl stencil is really cool, but it's so busy um, for this work. Um, I'm thinking I definitely might need to, I think just add a little black glazing over that section. There. And then see how you're, you're, you're carrying, you're repeating, you're overlapping. So then that emphasizes your layering process. And notice this um, hexagon area in the upper left-hand quadrant is at a slight angle. And see, I know. So that's the only thing that's left that's red. It's alone. It's not working. So it's got to go. And I had a feeling, that's an old playing card. You know, the the, the patterns on the back of playing cards, even playing cards themselves are really fascinating. And and even just using a section of one. Um, So you might want to try that. There's, it's amazing to uh, go in the dollar store. And I know we've talked about this and anywhere around the house, um, bookstores, old stuff. Um, But they're not allowed to keep old of ephemera, or I don't even know the proper pronunciation of that, and um, to collect because of, you know, COVID and all that stuff. So you just have to use your own or make it. So that's helping with the black and white that's diagonally across in the lower right hand quadrant but I probably could have used the same pattern there neutral with a just a thin line to you know repeat if something's working repeat it but I sort of repeated it in a different way but now that I'm noticing why it's working there's another another thing now I'll probably add this to my notes. Um, I've created, um, I use white binders and I've got that idea from Adele. She's amazing. And I've got everything organized. I have my marketing binder, this binder, that binder, uh, whoever the artist is, uh, binder. Oh, this was, this was a good idea because those, those lines again were too busy. Now, I don't know if this is the best solution. I'm really liking this. I think, oh, I know why I got it. Now, it was a different burlap. Uh, It was the real carpet hooking, carpet hooking burlap. I had a ton of it. I had to, I had to take, I had to throw some of it away. It's just too much, Uh, you know, storage, right? For all this stuff you think you're going to use. You know you're going to use, you just don't know when. But we only use little pieces. So that's okay. It's interesting. It's so heavy and thick in contrast, but still neutral to everything else. So I think we're coming to the end of these, this journey of three incredibly, um, I've learned so much from these paintings. Oh, I see. I thought I was going to turn that black. And you know, I think I might. It makes the eye go up. I think black might work. And I did cave and do the dots. 
but in the end, I did a thin layer of the neutral paint over them. So the contrast wasn't that crazy, wasn't that great. But I love how it brings the eye down. And now at the upper right hand quadrant looks a little empty. So it needs my lines, those pencil lines or black china marker lines. Then, which after it dries solid, I will put a gloss varnish over the whole thing. <clears throat> so finishing your work is very important how it looks. Now on the back, I'll use a sticker, the title, and I don't know how the um, floater frame frames finish for showing the back of your painting. Um, as of yet, which is crazy, I have not used floater frames. So I will find out. And I'm in Canada, so what floater frame companies online if I have a bunch of 12 by 12s black, I think I could order them in bulk, put them together myself. They're very simple. Um, any suggestions out there? Please leave some in the comments. So as I'm cleaning up these the edges of this one, I hope you have enjoyed this journey of three paintings in all of its stages, processes, changing, veiling, covering up, whatever you want to call it. And there we go. See, it's much better. Much, much, much better. They're still there, but they're not in your face. <laughs> oh, one more thing. Yes, my pencil lines. They're very subtle there, so I don't know. It's just enough. And we are done. So here's number one. And um, lots of yellow and neutral and black. Um, so please um, don't forget to hop over to this Facebook group. Um, subscribe, hit that like button, because now 2023 is going to be the year of much creativity. And I will see you in the next video.